good sense of these things being a musician so he tends to move my voice around a bit uh, he says that I speak far too quickly and that I kind of blur the rhythm a bit so uh, I probably if I was speaking that poem would speak it a bit more quickly but he's managed to find a way of spacing it greater impact I suppose to individual bits well just for the hell of it then will you give us a, maybe the opening four or five lines uh, down to the full stop of, of, of eight lines is it just at the speed that you would read it if you were just reading it as a straightforward piece of v- verbal poetry. So I'd say, Be me the brian gan stad, Trosham fokl ma ve la plaith in a smidrini gan es greher a brishta er taig eata eelta. You might now just give us, in fact, the translation of that opening section, because right across the page from it is love poem and that opening section translated into English for us, Louis. We fight all the time. I hear words hurled from my mouth break in shards of glass and smashed on the shut door of your whitewashed face. To finish out the poem first, as you heard it, as as clearly get in the in the rap version, I'm calling it. When I sweep up the shattered bits and pieces of our brittle love, I wouldn't hurt a fly. I feel clean as a constipated monk after a glorious shit. So unburdened, so serene. Fuck the neighbours. May we never stop fighting. I should warn you, Sean, that the last time that was broadcast on RTE, it was the subject of a complaint to the Broadcasting Commission, but hopefully we're over the threshold and it won't happen this time. And listen, in the the poem itself, uh, what what they really do get from you is one poem on the left-hand side of the page, Oscar Elliga, and then straightforward English on the other side. Does the poem become something totally different from you? When you translate it, uh, I suppose another way of asking this is, when did you write the poem and when did you write Love Poem? A uh, good question. I mean, that's quite an old poem. Uh, I'm in my early 50s now and I think I wrote that poem when I was about 30. Uh, I was in Australia at the time, so the translation was written quite quickly for public performances. And I suppose the challenge in translation is to keep the English as close as possible to the Irish. I still have this idea that if you keep it close as possible to the Irish, you, you, you allow the possibility that an interested reader might actually be able to read back and forth across the two so that eventually they might, using the stepping stones of English, come to fully inhabit the Irish language version of the poem. So, just to tease that out a little bit further for me, Louis, when you're saying that you try to make the English language version as close as possible, almost a literal translation, is it, of the Irish version initially? Well, one of the things that was very interesting in working with the translators here, Biddy Jenkinson, Kevin Anderson, and Mary O'Donoghue, is that I previously translated one of these poems, um, and I was conscious that of the Irish but would be something beyond what I was capable of achieving in which is why I my own translations was that I was taking terrible liberties with myself so the big question is why not start with the literal translation why tart it up if it works equally well so it doesn't always work well in Irish is more trying to do well than English is to state things quite simply and clearly in Irish without them necessarily being trite in the way that sometimes they can be in English. In fact, might we give an example of that, if you don't mind doing this again, you you talked about this thing of reading back and forth across the page. Page 92. The Irish poem title. Okay. 